Well, hey there, everybody. This is 3.7.10 comparing circles. So for this one, <clears throat> we want to make sure, actually, let's just run it and see what happens. It says three and four are equal, which means that one and two are not equal according to this. And that's weird because they have the same attributes. But when you use equals equals when you're comparing them, it does not check the attributes. It just checks to see if they're the same. Now, what do I mean by the same? Well, it does say three and four are equal. And if we look, when we create four, we're actually setting it equal to three, which means they're being point in the same memory address. Therefore, those ones are equal. But what we wanna do is we want to modify the equals method so that these two, when they're compared with one another, they will actually show that they're equal. So it says we should not be comparing objects using equals equals. Okie dokie. So let's come over here. And if you look here, we just have all these instance variables. We have a constructor. We have a bunch of getters. We're going to get values. And then we have a two string and then equals. So this is what we're going to focus on right now. So what we want to do is we want to see if this circle called other and all of their attributes are going to be equal to this to the previous circles attributes. And I'll show you what that means in a moment. So we can say if other dot now we want to get the x value. So if we look here, we can actually use this method called get x. So get x. We want to see if it equals, and we can use double equals here because x is an integer and get x is also an integer. So equals equals works for integers. And we can see if it equals x. So what the heck? Where is that x coming from? Well, x is coming from this class right here. So every time we make a new circle, it has these attributes. And the attributes of this circle that's being created is X. And I'll show you exactly in just a moment, if that's not too clear. And let's just return true just to kind of test draw a little bit. So let's go back to circle tester. And as it says, we're not gonna use equals equals, we're gonna use dot equals using the one we just created. Now, normally when we use dot equals, we've been comparing strings because dot equals is used for strings, hint, hint. But in this case, we're actually doing an overloaded method. We're overloading the equals method so that it can also work with circles. So that's pretty cool. So now one, in this case, one is the circle that we're calling this equals method from. The reason that's important is because this X right here is referring to circle one. This one right here, since it's in the parentheses of equals, which in this case, other is in the parentheses of equals, that we are using get x. So that's referring to circle two. So this one circles one attribute and this is circle two's attribute. Now we're comparing to see if they're equal. Now, if we run this, let's see what happens. Of course. So this is a really common thing, missing return statement. But we have a return statement, you say. Yes, we do. But we don't have a return statement if this is not true. So if this is false, we still need to have some, something being returned. So we could do one of two things. We can make an else statement and then do a return false in there, or we just do return false. Most of the time you'll see people just do return false. Because if this isn't run, remember a return statement leaves the method right away. So as soon as this happens, it'll never run the code below it. So that's why it's okay not to have an else there. So let's run this. And now it says one and two are equal because we're comparing 50 to 50. And those are equal. Okay. I hope that helps you guys. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.